We're going to we're going to dive into Joshua number nine. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and begin to turn it to Joshua number nine. And, and we're definitely going to speak a word and, and go through the scriptures together. But also give me just as I'm, I'm, I'm hearing like two messages. <laughs> uh, I, I already had in my notes, but even last night, God began to speak something a little bit different. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm speak. Um, if you can catch up with me, I'm I'm processing it. There we go, Anthony. Come on. I know it's 7 a.m. I'm processing the other message while I'm releasing the, the message that I have in my notes. And uh, I know God is going to get us there. He's, he's going to get us there. The Holy Spirit is going to lead us. But I believe that uh, we're, we're going to hit the first portion. And then on the backside, uh, I'm going to begin to transition into that final word of what I believe what God is saying. And it's all right here. My God, it's all right here in Joshua 9. Family, don't, isn't that the beautiful thing about the manifold wisdom of God? The manifold wisdom from his scriptures. That that family, sometimes we can approach God's word with familiarity. That we can approach it. Oh, I, I heard this already. I read this already. I understand. I have the wisdom from it. I have the revelation from it. And, and as we begin to travel more into his scriptures, God can begin to show you what we call the manifold wisdom. He can show you the other side. He, he, can, he can take you deeper. He can show you different angles, different filters. He can just spoke to you in one way in this season. But and now in this season, God is saying, yeah, that same word, come on, that same scripture, that same verse that you have read over and over, I'm getting ready to show you something different. And I even believe we're even going to experience that even today while we're chewing on his word. I, I believe it's powerful, even as we we're in chapter nine and, and we haven't even read all of the verses even in this Devo, because that's the powerfulness of God's word. God can give you one scripture. Come on. God can give you one word and you can go off in the remaining of your day chewing on that one verse. You couldn't even make it to the other, the other parts of the ch other chapter because there's so much meat. That's what I want. There's so much substance. There's so much, there's so much validity val there that God wants to give you so that you can chew on. It's always food in his house. Come on. We, we just spoke about that, preached about that on this past Sunday. There's always bread in God's house. And the more we sit with him, the more we chew on his word, I believe that's what God wants to show us here. And today, my friend, I, I want to I wanna preach a word or teach a word um, about keeping your fighting eye. Keeping your fighting eye. We understand the scriptures, the scriptures teaches us this family, uh, um, that we, when we lose our fighting eye, we begin to walk by sight and not by faith. See, see, family, I believe this family that the, the scriptures tells us to trust in the Lord. Come on. Come on, Bible scholars. Finish that verse for me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Come on. All of it. Not some of it. Not, not just the parts that you want to give to him. Come on. But trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. I think that's powerful because we're going to see this even play out in this particular chapter of Joshua 9. To lean not unto your own understanding. Yes, I know you have a very high Q. Yes, I know you have so many degrees on the wall. You got what they said. You got more, de more degrees than the thermostat, <laughs> uh, the thermometer, excuse me, that's on the wall. Yes, yes, you're so intelligent. You're so smart. We speak that beauty about your life. But understand this. Come on, we all fall short. There's no wisdom that's outsmart. You cannot outsmart God. Come on, can I say it that way? So let us not lean onto our own understanding. Perhaps you, maybe you have some big, bold decisions that, that you have to make in this season of your life. Maybe you, you're, you're on the brink of something very powerful and do not allow your, your, do not allow your being comfortable or unfamiliar with this. Or can I even say it this way? Do not allow your senses to always guide you. Oh, I sense this. Um, um, I, 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 I just have a good feeling about this. Feelings are good, my friend. Yes, they are. But feelings are just an indicator. I don't want my feelings to guide me. <laughs> I, I, I don't want my feelings making major decisions for me. 
I want the Holy Spirit, I want his peace to sit with me. The Bible tells us that Jesus says this, I'm going, I'm, I'm releasing the comforter, the Holy Spirit, unto you. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us. The Holy Spirit is here to lead us on our journey. And I don't want my senses making major decisions for me because my senses can be off on that day. My senses could have woke up on the a, on a wrong side of the bed. <laughs> my senses could be impacted by what I ate last night. Come on, somebody. My, my senses can just be on its off game, and God is never off his off game. And so this is why we say lean not into your own understanding. Keep your eye on him. And this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to get into, the, into this word because we got to move pretty quick. And this is what I mean by keeping your fighting eye. Keeping your fighting eye means you're keeping your eye on the one who bears all truth and knows all truth. That's what Joshua 9 is getting ready to show us. Joshua 9 is getting ready to show us of a particular moment for Israelites. We understand that they just defeated AI. They had to go back and defeat AI because of disobedience. They have the victory over AI, and now they're moving along, but now they're getting ready to touch and agree with someone or some camp or some, some, some nation, some, 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 some um, king that they're not supposed to be touching and agreeing with. And this is powerful, my friend. This is powerful because as we're walking along this, yes, you may not be in a physical war like the Israelites were. We understand we're not in a physical war. We're, we're reading the scripture and, and going through Joshua because we understand, yes, I'm not in a physical, physical war, but my God, I'm in a spiritual war. Come on. I'm in a spiritual war, Pastor Anthony. Come on, it, it's some battles going over here, Pastor Anthony. You don't, you don't see this blood right now. And I'm, I'm going through some things. I, I understand that there's a spirit and it's the flesh. I understand that there's good and there's bad. I understand that there's good and there's evil. And I understand that there's an enemy that does not like my progress, so he's after me. Come on, we've been preaching this word. Come on, you've been mocked by God, but you've also been mocked by the enemy because you're in a spiritual war. And the enemy wants you not to live in the days of truth. The enemy does not want you to settle in truth. So this is why he has to bring deception in our life so that we won't touch and agree with the truth that God has spoken over you. What's in your life right now that you are still believing that's actually a lie? Mm. Maybe you have lost your fighting eye. Keeping your eye on him lets me know that I can live in his truth and not the enemy's truth because the enemy doesn't have no truth. Come on, family. He's the father of all lies. And the truth is not even in him, what Jesus has said. So today we're going to lock in with our fighting eye and we're going to pick up here in Joshua 9, verse 1. And I'm going to be reading from the CSB. And I'm going to break it down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to break a few of these scriptures down, and then we're going to imp, uh, um, uh, excuse me, unpack a certain amount of the things. It's good family. Come on. Joshua 9, verse 1, it says, when all the kings heard about Jericho, yeah, when all the kings heard about Jericho and Ai, those who were west of the Jordan in the hill country in Judean foothills and all along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea towards Lebanon. The Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Rezites, all, this, this, all the yikes, 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 <laughs> the Hivites, the Jebusites. And can you imagine this family? This is verse one. Come on. They heard, yeah, they heard about what happened to Jericho and I, and AI. These are all the kings that's on that day. They heard, who? something, this God is coming. Him and his people are coming. And this is what this is what I, 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 I'm putting a focus here because I need you need to be reminded today. I need to be reminded the enemy does not like when we have progress in our life. This is why you have to celebrate your progress. You may not be living at the destiny right now or you may not be at your Super Bowl. But come on right now. Come on. You have some victories in your life. You have some victories in your life. God is moving in your life and the enemy does not know. I mean, excuse me, the enemy does not like that you have progress 
The enemy knows that you're on your way. Come on, receive that today, my friend. You're on your way to better. You're on your way to peace. Come on, you're on your way to joy. Come on, you're on the way uh, of seeing your family walk and host. And if you're, you're on the way by faith, because here this family, we, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith and we receive we're on the way. And this is a beautiful thing because AI was not the final battle. I need to say this. I need to break this, this verse one down. AI was not the final battle. There were more cities to be captured. They understand this conquest. And, and they understand they had more battles. But watch this. AI was not the final battle. And they lost the AI. That lets me know that one defeat does not lose the battle. Come on. They lost the AI, but that did not that did not ruin the conquest. Yeah. You will experience some defeats in your life. But you have to shake yourself off. And just like God told Josh, Joshua, get up, shake yourself off, wipe them tears from your eyes, get back up, stand up, say it with your chest. Come on, shake off. Hey, maybe you already have some losses in year 2024 already, my friend. But God is saying it's time to get back up because one defeat does not lose the battle. But also this, my friend, they, they went back and defeated AI. And, and now they're getting ready to trip up again. And it lets me know that one victory does not win the entire war. The devil is after us and he's always looking to trip you up with deception. So just because we have a victory in our life, it is not a time to get comfortable. It is a time to rejoice in his presence, but also keep your fighting eye. Come on. They keep your fighting eye and stay in tune to what God is saying because we, we have to be aware of his strategies. I'm talking about the enemy because remember, we're in a spiritual war and we must be aware of his strategies and also this family, we must recognize when he's trying to lead us astray with deceptive actions. Yeah, the enemy is always looking to trip you up. The enemy is always looking to bring deception into your life. And this is why you have to keep your fighting on and allow God to lead you and guide you into all truth. And so we go into verse two and, and, and they form, talking about the kings here, and, and they form a unified alliance to fight against Joshua and Israel. We're in verse number three. And these are the kings. The king's like, okay, the Israelites are coming. So instead of, uh, of attacking, by, attacking them by ourselves, we're actually going to come together. Let, let's actually form an alliance, and then we, we probably can defeat them. But in verse 3, Gibeon, come on, Gibeon, he, he decides not to join with the other kings. This is what we're this is what we're picking up at. Gibeon actually goes on a, his own solo plan. They go on their own solo plan. So in verse 3, it says, when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they acted deceptively. Underline that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, we're going to teach this. They acted deceptively. They gathered provisions and took worn out sacks on their donkeys and old wineskins, cracked and mended. They were old patched sandals on their feet and thread bear, bear, excuse me, clothing on their bodies. Their entire provision of bread was dry and crumbly. They went to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, we have come from a distant land. Please make a treaty with us. You may say, hey, Pastor Anthony, why, 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 why are you reading that? Why is that important? That's important, my friend, because God already told already told the Israelites back in Exodus to, to make sure that you don't make any treaty with anybody in the land of Canaan. He told them, destroy them all. Come on. There's no compromise here. He said, hey, I'll wipe them all out. Don't settle. Follow my instructions. Follow my instructions. Do everything. And, and so now his Gibeon, and Gibeon is working through deception in order to get close to Israel. And so he pretended, they pretended to be the ambassadors. And this is very, this is very key because 
the Gibeonites would try to deceive themselves into Israel and making peace with them. And they work deceptively. That's why I told you to underline that. I, I want to teach this. I'm trying to take my time and teach this because I think this is very powerful because they work deceptively. The enemy is deceptive. My God, John 10, 10 tells us this family, come on, we know the word, that, that the enemy comes to do what? He got a he, enemy got a three-track mind. He comes to steal, <laughs> kill, and destroy. He don't switch his plan up. We know his recipe. He doesn't come in any other way or form and fashion. He's coming to what? Steal your joy. He's coming to kill your marriage. Come on. He's coming to, to destroy your life. He, 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 that's his three-track mind, and the enemy is always deceptive. Genesis 3 tells us this, family. Genesis 3 tells us this, that he that he's more cunning than any other beast in the field. My God. His, his first recorded words in the Bible was deceptive. D did God really say that? A Adam and Eve, did, 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 did God really? Are you sure? Did, 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 did God really say that you're supposed to walk in this direction? Did, 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 did God really say that, 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 that you're supposed to be in this business? Did, did God really say, come on, we, we can live in that space. Oh my God. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to what they say. I'm preaching to the choir right now. Just type amen because we can all live in that space. Did God really say this? Maybe I missed you, God. Maybe I, maybe this is why I'm fasting because God, I need some assurance <laughs> that you have said this. And when we take our eye off of God, the question is, who do we begin to put our eye towards? Yeah. When we take our eye off of him and we're not focused on him, this is when the enemy loves to slide in. This is when the enemy loves to get close to you. And now he begins to whip, whisper deception. deception. Did God really say that? Look what's going on in your life. Did Are you sure that God said that? See, this is the enemy. The enemy is very deceptive. I'm going to keep saying it repetitive because I want that to sink right into your heart, into your mind, because deceptive is it, it's, the definition tells us that it's, it's giving an appearance or impression different from the one that's true. Mm, yeah. See, watch the strategy of the Gibeonites right here. They know they're getting ready to be defeated. So now instead of joining with the alliance they want to come in deception yeah the enemy knows that he's already defeated in your life so the enemy knows that i have to i have to trip them up with deception and and this is very powerful so now watch this i need you to i need you to i need you to see these two things or two strategies of how the enemy the gibeonites tried to trip up the israelites in deception the first one is this, they, and write this down, they misrepresented themselves. They misrepresented themselves. We're, I'm, I'm unpacking two strategies, how the enemy tried to trip up the Israelites in this text. They misrepresented themselves. They pretended. See, this is what Paul was talking about in 2 Corinthians 11, 14. 2 Corinthians 11, 14, it, it tells us this family that, Paul said, and no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Yeah, even Satan will come and appear as an angel of light, but he's actually disguising himself. And this is why we have to make sure we're sitting with God, because the enemy will come in many different ways of forms and fashion, but at the core of it, it leads to, that's what I need you to need you to catch. It leads to steal, kill, and destroy. See, family, there, there will be times in our life where we would touch and agree with things that God is telling us not to touch and agree. It may seem right in a season, but trust me, my friend, if it's from the enemy, it will eventually lead to steal, kill, destroy. So it can it can bring you a sense of happiness in this season. 
but eventually it's going to lead to steal, kill, and destroy. Are, are, are you following me? This is what the enemy loves to do. This is what he began in, in, in the garden. Come on. It, 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 it was happy. It, 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 it pleased them for a moment, but it led to separation. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what God God is saying because the enemy, just like he did, he's a snake. He's swithering, slithering around even in your life right now. And this is why we have to keep our eye on him so that we can stop, stomp on the enemy. The second one is this. The second one is this, is that they gave a false evidence as part of their deception. See, remember, they, they told, I, I, I want to teach the text because they, if you need a little bit more context, they they told the Israelites, yeah, we're we're from a far distant land. They even bought like old food and, and different things. But they actually were neighbors. They're actually right here. The Israelites are on their way, but they tried to trick the they try to trick the Israelites and say, hey, no, we're we're not, we're not, we're not part of them. We're actually from a far distant land. And we heard about your God. We heard about what your God is doing. And we actually want to come and join with you guys. And if you can make a peace to not kill us. And so they came, they, they, they came with false evidence. And this is why John 8, 44, I said it earlier, I believe. This is why John 8, 44 tells us this, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue. This is, this is Jesus saying, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue, for he is a liar and the father of lies talking about the enemy. The enemy always speaks with lies through deception. The enemy always tries to pretend to be something else, but it's actually deception. And this is why I, I'm preaching right to your heart. I'm preaching right to your mind today because I want us to pause in this fast to take time and say, you know what, God, show me through the spirit of discernment, discernment of that where I can see where the enemy is trying to fool me. Yeah. Show me, God, that, you know what? No, that's actually the enemy over there, and I don't need to touch and agree with that anymore. I don't need to give my ear to that no more. I don't need to give my attention to that anymore. My God, praise God. Come on, somebody. Praise God. I just feel like a praise right now. Praise God for always interrupting things in our life that we was getting ready to touch and agree with. Praise God that I was getting ready to walk through that door. I was getting ready to sign that check. I was getting ready to make an agreement. I was getting ready, come on, to jump in that relationship. I, I was getting ready to take that job. I was getting ready to make this pivot, but God stepped in and blocked it. Thank God that he's an interrupter. Thank God that he will always lead us and not lead us astray. Thank God, praise to be to God, that he will always lead us and guide us into all truth. I, I believe that's the word for you today, my friend, that God will show you the realness, <laughs> the authenticness, authenticity of who the enemy is in, in, in your life, that the spirit is over there because he's cunning, family. He, 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 he's cunning. And, 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 and here's the principle because I, I need to teach this of why this is powerful. I need to teach this of, of, of why the, the power of agreement is powerful. Because family, even in, 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 even in the scriptures, the word tells us when two or three are gathered, come on, that there's power, that there's power that God is in the midst. It even shows us, even in the Old Testament, thank, thank you, God, that how can two, you know, walk in the same direction? If the one is walking this way, they and one is actually going into the pit. I mean, there's so many scriptures about agreement. I think that's what God is telling us. But agreement, the power or the principle of agreement just doesn't work with positivity -ness. Yes, the power of agreement also works in a negative. If you have two people <laughs> that's, in, that, that's in agreement about something that's negative, that thing is going to be powerful. If they can get on the same page about a lie, yeah. If they can get on the same page about something that's not true, it doesn't matter that it's negative. The power is in an agreement, yeah. The power that is in an agreement, and they can agree, they can go establish whatever they want to establish, not because that is negative, they can establish because there's agreement there. 
God is teaching a principle throughout his word with the power, powerfulness of agreement. And so when we touch and agree, but now we're not just touching and agree with anything. And here's your secret sauce. Yeah, you're just not touching and agreeing with anything. You're touching and agreeing with God. And when you touch and agree with God, you're touching and agreeing with his eternalness and things that can rust and, and morph away. No, you're touching for things that's everlasting. And this is the powerfulness of agreement in your life. And this is why the enemy, this is why the enemy wants to trip you up with deception so that you can touch and agree with the wrong thing. Because the enemy know as soon as you touch and agree with God, things are getting ready to be shaken up and things are getting ready to form. I hope this is helping somebody. I, I really do. I hope this is helping somebody. Because if we go down to verse 14, drop down to Joshua 9, 14, and because I, I, I want to I want to I want to tie this together. And it says, then the men of Israel took some of their provisions. But watch this, but did not seek the Lord's decision. So Joshua established peace with them and made a tree treaty to let them live. And the leaders of the community, <clears throat> excuse me, and the leaders of the community swore an oath to kill um, to, to them, excuse me. So Joshua and Israel did not seek God's approval or wisdom or direction in this tree treaty. We already unpacked that. They already knew, they already had foreknowledge, one, from Exodus, that they wasn't even supposed to make this agreement. And this is going to be powerful. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to make, I'm going to make, I'm going to connect the dots. And this is powerful, but even in this context, the, the scriptures tells us that they did not seek the Lord. They, they did not, they did not take time to actually bring this unto God and say, hey, God, what do you think about this? This is the powerfulness of fasting and prayer. What do you what do you bring it to, to God? Hey, God, what do you think about this? Should, should I move left? Do we pause enough to actually hear God's wisdom? Do we pause enough to actually feel his direction? Yeah. Do we pause enough or do we move off a senses or do we actually move off from his spirit? Like I said before, friend, I, I, I don't want you to be led by your senses. They're here for a reason. And we can do a whole sermon series on senses. They're a great thing. They're a beautiful thing. But they don't lead you. They're indicators. Your feelings are indicators. They are, they're, they're, they're your, they, they, are the, they are the lights on your dashboard. There we go. When you're driving your car, that's your feeling. And, 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 and that check engine light come on, yeah, that's a feeling. Your car's feeling something. You need to go to the service shop. <laughs> but it doesn't lead you. We are led by faith, not by feelings. We are led by faith, not by sight. So, yes, you feel your feels and be true and authentic to yourself. We've been teaching that. Feel your feels today. Yeah, that's my therapist. Say, feel your feels today. But my feels are not going to lead me. My feels, my feels is not going to lead me because my feels can actually lead me astray. The, 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 the Bible tells us that, that the issues of life, come on, scriptures, flow through my heart. Yeah. And if, I, if, I'm, if I'm allowing every feel to lead me today, oh, my God, whoo, this is going to be a wild day because there's some thoughts that come through our minds. And every wind that just coming and we just flowing with it. No, my friend. Settle down, ten toes down, park yourself in, in the rock of Jesus Christ and say, Holy Spirit, lead me. I bring this to you to lead me. But family, as we're talking about deception, and if you join us early on this call, it's two messages here that God has shown me. Because we're talking about keeping our fighting eye. We're talking about making sure we put our eye on him. And I, I want to connect the dots. And I believe I see what God is saying now. Because to be honest, let's, let's be honest. When we're reading Joshua, a lot of times, a lot of times we focus in on we are the Israelites. Yeah. Come on. We're, we're the Israelites in this story. We're conquering Jericho. And, that's, and we've been doing that. But God began to show me something. There are times in our life, family, where we're actually not the Israelites in this story right now. We can, we can sometimes be like the Gibeonites. 
We can sometimes be like the Gibeonites in this section. To be honest, here's my transparency. To be honest, I understand why the Gibeonites did it. They understood, they, they had knowledge that, you know what? My life is getting ready to end. I'm at, I'm at the, to get close to God. And sometimes we can judge our season on how we came to the Lord. I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm hearing what God is saying now. Because my friend, write this down. This is powerful. I just I put it down before I, I, I came on. And this is what God, God, God told me. He said, don't judge yesterday decision with today's wisdom. Mm, my God, thank you for that break. Don't judge yesterday's decisions with today's wisdoms. Here's what I mean. Watch this. Here's what I mean. This is the Gibeonites. This is how they came unto the Lord. Once Joshua, it took Joshua and, and, and the Israelites three days to realize that this is actually the enemy. And once they realized that this was actually the enemy, Joshua, because he made a vow and he couldn't, he couldn't break it, he made an oath, he couldn't break it. So instead of killing them, he actually made them slaves. He actually made them servants. The scriptures tells us further along that he, he actually made them water couriers and, and woodcutters. There we go, and woodcutters. And so, but it also said that he made them servants in the tabernacle. Mm. They went, oh my God, I, I hear what he's saying. They went from being enemies and not knowing what they was getting ready to do. And somehow mysterious or miraculous, to be honest, that, that when they should have, oh my God, that the, that the God in his camp should have took them out. They actually saved them by grace somehow. And now, and now, instead of their life supposed to be death, they actually got front row seat at his presence. Oh my God, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying because a lot of us on this call, let me not say a lot of us, all of us on this call can have moments in our life when we are like the Gibeonites. Yeah, the Gibeonites came through deception of being a liar, Rahab, come on, let's go back to the to, to, to early and Joshua could have was a harlot, a prostitute, and that was her BC season before Christ season. But somehow, even through all of that, God said, you know what? Don't judge yourself on a bad decision. Take today's wisdom and I'm getting ready to save you. See, never underestimate your story on how you came to Christ. And here's what I'm saying, because this is powerful, because just because the Gibeonites made a bad decision, I'm always hearing the destruction of the Gibeonites in this text. They're just beating them down in this text. But their story didn't end there, my friend. We have to read the full text. That their story did not, their story did not end there. It, it, it did not end there because eventually, Eventually, like I said, they, they made themselves uh, a servant at the tabernacle. I said that. But then eventually, if we continue to read the scriptures, Gibeon actually became a priestly city. Mm. Get, and, and this is action when we get to David, David dancing in the street. The Ark of the Covenant actually stayed in the city for, 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 for a moment of time. Mm, powerful. This became a powerful place. It carried the presence of God. My God, this is powerful because they supposed to have been destructed. Now they're actually carrying the presence of God. Oh, my God, I'm speaking to somebody's life right now. Come on, we are stomping on the enemy head because you've been living in shame about your season on how you, how you came to Christ. And God is saying, no, I, when I should have killed you, I should have destroyed you. I should have left you for dead. But now I'm bringing you to have a front row presence at my at, at a seat of my presence. Even when Joshua, oh, my God, this just even when the Israelites who actually turned their back on God, eventually we're going to see it was the Gibeonites still standing there, mm, still serving still in the tab tabernacle, still doing their duties, they did responsibilities, they did not turn their back on God, even when the Israelites did. 
And maybe they didn't turn their back on God because they had a, rem a remembrance in their soul. Woo. Maybe they didn't turn their back on because they say, you know what? I, I should have been dead, but thank God I'm still here to praise you. If I got to be a water carrier, if I got to be a wood cutter, whatever I need to do, come on, the scripture says, even if I got to stand as a doorkeeper, I would rather be there than be out there. Whatever you want me to be, I'll praise you, God. And this is powerful of what God is saying. Matter of fact, come on, can I give you this? Can I give you some more scriptures? Uh, hopefully this is not too much, family. Come on, I know you can handle it. Even the Gibeonites, when we look at David, David had David had the mighty men of valor. Go read it. Powerful men did incredible things. Even the, the scriptures tells us you read through, you take your time and read through that one of the men in his camp of being part of this mighty men actually came from the camp of Gibeonites. Mm -mm -mm. Even here's another one. The story doesn't stop. The story doesn't stop. Even, even when we read that in Nehemiah, when they went to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, come on, who was standing and helping Nehemiah? Yeah, 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 go read the scriptures. Come on, go, go, go read the scriptures. Who was standing there helping on the wall, helping to restore the walls of Jerusalem? Guess who was there? It was the Gibeonites. It was the Gibeonites there. And this is what God is saying. Your story, I don't, it doesn't matter how you came to God. I'm going to say it again just so it can drop in your spirit. Don't judge yourself or your past season off of a bad decisions. And let me put an S on that. <laughs> but take today's wisdom and, 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 and walk in that powerfulness and walk in the very things that God is calling you to do. Just a reminder that God can do great things through people who were sinners. My God, look at Paul. Come on. Paul was actually out trying to, not trying to, actually did murder Christian believers. And God somehow miraculously turned and flipped his life upside down. And now we're reading epistles even to this day that is blessing our soul. I, 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 I hear what God is saying. There's a connection here. And sometimes we can focus in on part A, on, on deceit, on deception. And we can focus in that they were a liar. And we can focus in that that was a harlot. And we can focus in that they was a murderer. And we can focus in. And I don't know what your BC story is. But what I do know is that he saved you by grace. Yeah. I do know that God has a plan for you. I, I do know that God has a story for you. I do know that God says your story doesn't end right here. Matter of fact, when you give your life to me, your story is just beginning because I have so much more for you. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. And I am the God who will step in the middle and walk with you, my friend. Turn the chapters with you, my friend. I know you were supposed to be left for dead, but we're stomping on the enemy head. And the best way in this season to stomp on the enemy head is to keep your fighting eye on him. And we don't walk by sight. Mm. But we walk by faith. We walk by faith. We walk by faith. Come on, we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Come on, we we walk by faith. We walk by faith. We walk by faith. Come on. You got to receive that we walk by faith. So as I get ready to close out, I, I pray that we receive that today, that the enemy loves to move in deception. But even when we get tripped up, it's not the end of your story. God saves you by faith. 